holes given the fabric of the universe. Uh, it, Brian, you're messing with us here. It's yeah. called the Black but, Hole Information but keep at it. <laughs> It's been around since the 1980s, based on Stephen Hawking's very famous paper in 1974, which showed that black holes radiate. Black holes ain't so black, Stephen said. They, they radiate, they glow like holes in the sky. Mm. It's called Hawking radiation. And ultimately, because they glow, like coals in the sky and it's to do actually with entanglement quantum entanglement in the vacuum of space and the event horizon of the black hole and so anyway they evaporate they're gone then one day they are gone uh, and it's now widely accepted that all the information that, that fell into the black hole over time including the star that built it the whole lot ends up imprinted heavily scrambled as chuck said really scrambled up and imprinted in the Hawking radiation that came out. So if you were, and this is very much in principle, right? If you were an om, om, almost omniscient super being with the world, the biggest quantum computer you could possibly imagine, and you managed to stick all the information, all the Hawking radiation into the quantum computer, then in principle, you could reconstruct what had happened over all that time. So this is gluing back together yeah. a shredded it's document. It's a transporter in principle, machine. If you burn a book, <laughs> very 2022, right? Um, then in principle, if you could gather everything that came off the book, you could reconstruct the book. So, and, and we think fundamentally in physics, physics is deterministic. This is what determinism is. Information is not destroyed. It's scrambled up unimaginably difficult to reconstruct things. But in fundamentally, in principle, we think that information is conserved in the universe. Uh, black holes appeared to violate that wow. because it appeared that stuff that fell in never came out. All right, now, wait a minute. Now, now I gotta get, okay, I'm, I'm so sorry, man, because I just, I can't go through without just knowing this because Neil and I on a show during an explainer, give me a second, we talked about black holes and then we were talking about virtual particles that appear outside of the black hole. Is that indeed information from within the black hole? That's the picture that we have. Oh, snap. <laughs> well, 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 I think, Chuck, the way to think about it is it came out of the energy of the gravitational energy that is the field that the black hole makes. So it kind of doesn't matter in that case wh whether it's on one side of the event horizon or the or other. Or the other. Yeah, uh, am I right here, Brian? I mean, it's just, it's the it's the black hole giving yeah, there are lots of ways to think itself. about it. I mean, in, okay. in, in the Stephen's universe. paper, actually, the 1974 one. Stephen, Stephen's paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, not, not Joey's paper, not Jimmy's paper, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stevie Reno's paper. Yeah. Okay, go, yeah. go, go so on, Brian. Vacuum, empty space is heavily entangled. And he, and he says this is not, he writes in the introduction, it's not the best, it's not an, a, an exact picture, but it's good enough, right? So you can imagine these particles popping in and out of existence all the time in the vacuum of space, and they're entangled, right? And they're in and out, in and out like that. And if you think on the, it, when there's an event horizon of a black hole, you can have this situation where one of them is on the inside and one of them is on the outside. You shouldn't think of them crossing the horizon. You, you just, it, it, you can have this situation where one of them's inside, one of them's outside. They're entangled. The one that's outside can go away and take energy away from the black hole, as Neil said. Uh, and the, the one inside, you would think, just stays there and it eventually goes to the singularity or whatever's happening. Um, but, but because the black hole evaporates and it's gone one day, then the thing that this was entangled with, the one that went out into the universe, is gone. So that's a destruction of information. And that, that's the heart of the information paradox. So it's a different way of producing radiation. If you burn the book, then it's, everything's in contact with it itself. And you, you, know, the, every, it's all, you know how, these, how, the, how the smoke and the ashes are being produced, right? But, but it's different the way that a black hole glows. And so that was part of the problem. Well, wait, so, so, is, so is it still entangled with the particle that escaped? Is the particle inside the event horizon still entangled with the particle that escaped? So the problem, and actually the problem actually comes about halfway through the black hole's life. It's called the page time for the experts. But broadly, you can think of it as saying, these things are entangled. I can't just destroy entanglement because if I do that, I destroy information. And in some sense, destroy space as well. It's, it's often referred to as the glue that holds space together. But anyway, so you can't just erase entanglement. 
But then if you've got all these Hawking radiation particles emitted for trillions of years that are all entangled with the interior of the black hole, and then the black hole is gone, then you have a problem. So that's the black hole information problem. So, so again, getting back to the point of the speed of light, these um, you're inventing, or you and 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 partners in crime here are inventing wormholes as the medium between well, no, the two. No, actually, interestingly, historically, yes, uh, Leonard Susskind and, and others had this pit this ER equals EPR picture that I described. But actually, the, um, the modern picture uh, is, is they're not being invented. It's, uh, it's often described as, as gravity itself. It seems that Einstein's theory of general relativity kind of knows more than you give it credit for. So, so you get these geometries, these shapes of space-time that are really, they're, they're emerging from the theory. It's that you don't put them in by hand. So, because it, it sounds like someone's just fudged it, right? Just made it, made up something, and gone. Ah, oh, let's just have wormholes all over the place. That's really not how it's happening in the calculations. People are doing calculations, and then it's beginning to look like there are wormholes backing up this speculative idea that was uh, offered a few decades ago. Now, so that's that's the way it's going. So, so what you know? What what blows my mind is the idea that. Things we just accepted blindly as that's just how it is. And when you accept something as how it is, you no longer ask a deeper question. Mm. And you're just content with all that. It's curved space because, you know, matter curves space. Space tells matter how to move. And we're done here. On to the next problem. And you kept thinking about it. I love you it. You and your I mean, peeps. Me. I should say it's, it, was, it was initially... That yeah, was you. Take credit. They're not here. <laughs> Brian, they're not here. Just take the credit. They're not here. Who cares? 